Hi, I'm Danny Ramos, and welcome to this week's edition of Hispanic Speak Out TV, brought to you for eight years on Bright House Cable, every Tuesday night, 9.30 p.m., and I'm here with my co-host, Jose Miranda, who used to be a radio uh, jock and do community fairs on the radio, but then he got smart and came with us. <laughs> And uh, Gloria, Gloria is uh, one of our correspondents who handles social issues in the Orlando community. Hi, Gloria, how are you? Hi, how are Hi. you? Good, good. What do you guys want to hit first? Let's talk about homeless. Let's, Let's talk, talk about, about homeless. You're on. That's Let's fine. go. That's fine. That's fine. What's been going on with the homeless in Orlando? I know that the last time we met, you took, you took me and Jose into the woods to visit people living in tents, mm -hmm. okay, which was very impactful because I actually took that back to um, the people in the church that I belong to, and they've decided to make that an issue for them mm -hmm. because it impacted them on the description that I gave them as a result of, the, of us going into the woods and seeing that. And that's amazing, and pretty much a lot of people are just take uh, 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 initiative to, mm -hmm. to do something, and, and it's necessary. Uh, and you can find a lot of situations, that, uh, a lot of homeless situations that just change a little bit the perspective that you see. Uh, like I say before, it is totally different um, um, populations. I mean, they're homeless, but I'm homeless. They're like clinically, like they're for there because they are draw. They they have drugs issues, alcohol issues, yeah. issues, that they have that. And then other people that has just lost everything. I mean, they're professionals, they have a, a very good income, and then the income disappear, and then the savings disappear, and then they get in the position of get homeless. There are families there. So it's a lot of different situations, and I noticed that pretty much everybody's just allowed to yeah. start helping. Well, you, you um, were responsible for someone being employed in my office. Yeah. What? Well, yeah, that was like really, really a sequence of events that you know I didn't even realize it, and then all of a sudden I got to do another payroll check, <laughs> <laughs> and that was you. So tell no. us a little bit about. Um, let's use. Don't use her last name. Let's just use her first name, and give us a little background on her. Well, this this is amazing when you can start doing something for someone. Actually, everybody just think that they can help or they cannot help because they don't have a lot of money, they don't have influence, they don't know too many people. But if, if you just help one person, that is a lot. You can imagine mm -hmm. one person helping another person is a lot of them. Mm -hmm. It is mm -hmm. a lot of help outside. So this lady, um, I know because uh, she works like a volunteer and a homeless activities. She came to the to to the place that we are feeding with uh, one of our sister organizations, and um, and she has a very bad situation in his past. She was abused. She has to live like a, in a shelter uh, with the kids, um, pretty much homeless. And uh, she has a very good experience. She was a professional woman. She was like a perfect uh, professional uh, good-looking people like she, have, she has a degree she has a, she degree, has a degree from the University of Puerto Rico yes and education and education so she was a professional yeah. lady only with a bad situation that got her into a homeless situation homeless situation and then what when she started helping and she started she never let us know what it does her situation we find out as soon as she she wants to start their own business but Unfortunately, because the economic situation, her business just dropped. Mm -hmm. So she recommends it again, home in a very bad situation, homeless situation, and then we start talking about, hey, I'm doing this, I'm doing that. So she said, wow, uh, I passed with that, and I, I have that situation before, and that's why I want to help. When I know that, I say, okay, let me do something for her. Because it's not, it's not the idea that some people know or think that if, if this person is homeless, she doesn't deserve anything. I mean, probably I give you some clothes that I don't use, or probably I give you food, but they don't need an opportunity because they are probably there because they, they want to be there. Mm -hmm. And that's not the reality of the situation. And people like her that just want to move on, but she doesn't have a hand to say, hey, Give, let me give you an opportunity, and you give the opportunity, and she's doing great. And I, I was very happy to see her in an events that we just get together, like like she is 
-hmm. Like she is a very professional yeah. woman in and in, 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 in different environment. I don't well, believe is, that it's the same, the same yeah, person. Yeah, this is a, an interesting story because when you think of somebody who's homeless, you think of somebody who's not capable exactly. of defending themselves professionally. Uh -huh. And she was in the office for a few days and I sent her to the first event that very, the week that she was in, I sent her to a first event, I gave her brochures, I said, go represent the company, this is what you have to do, here's your variables. And she, she's been to maybe 10 events or 15 events, I don't, I don't know the number, but it's up there, mm -hmm. in the last three or four weeks. I mean, she went to Melbourne for us to meet with the Chamber of Commerce in Melbourne at a dinner, the day before she was at a women's conference. Uh, the other day she went to a radio station to an interview so she's really doing good grassroots community work I just you know we just have to generate the money to keep everybody going because we have the same issues as a nonprofit that everybody yeah. has we're lucky we have a friend and that's taking care of a lot of stuff and, and it's nice it's yeah. nice to 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 know that you can do something yeah and 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 you give you the opportunity to show mm -hmm. what really yeah. that person is, is and she she's a chaplain though she's a, and, and she's a chaplain which which you know, I recently became a chaplain, okay, so mm -hmm. I went through the, the, what you go through to become a chaplain, and I didn't know that she was a chaplain until after I hired her. Oh my. Yeah, so we were sitting there and I said, look, I want you to do this um, regarding some things in the church that I'm a member of, and, and that was a chaplaincy thing that I'm, I'm working on to recruit chaplains. And she says, well, I asked her, well, would you like to consider being a chaplain? You do great work in the community. And she said, I'm already a chaplain. So that, to me, was a big surprise. But you see, a, a lot of people doesn't know uh, what you do or what the ability for work with, for the community. And and I was checking about the chaplain and, and all that what they do. And it's a lot of people out out there helping and do uh, pretty much what the chaplain is helping yeah. people go through the community, do, go through the person first, mm -hmm. and then try to help them to to see the person in in, in, in a global. Exactly. Wait, it's not only the doesn't have a home or doesn't have a food for for tonight or whatever. They are looking for for the entire thing. You are you are a husband. You are a mom. You are a sister. You are what you are. But but that's the premium thing for mm -hmm. for the people that are working on the community. And they don't know that it, they are working like that's without exactly, a title. Yeah, that's exactly exactly the way I communicate. I had this lady uh, who I know for many years who has HIV, and uh, she is the only survivor out of three support groups. In other words, everybody passed away in the first support group, mm -hmm. then there was another, everybody passed away in the second support group, and when you have HIV, you have to keep a very rigid program of taking medicines. It has to be extremely precise. You can't, if, if you're scheduled to take it at 12 o'clock, you cannot take it at 1 o'clock. It has to be precisely at 12 o'clock because that one hour, you start to slide and within that one hour, immediately your body gets attacked. Mm -hmm. So she has been, you know, and, and most people in that condition, they, they, don't, they think, oh, I'll take it when I get home or something like that. That's not the way it works. So she has been able to survive 20 years and that's when, when things were, okay, HIV is taboo, you know, it, nobody was giving money or helping people with HIV. It was like a lepra type concept. Mm -hmm. And she survived. I, I spoke to her um, a couple of days ago and I, she's been doing chaplaincy work with people with HIV. You know, so she's been doing support groups, she's been doing seminars and all of that. She just finished getting uh, uh, two operations um, in the past three months. So now she's back, she's feeling good and I spoke to her on the phone and I, I told her about chaplaincy and she says, you know, that's really weird. I got to talk to you <laughs> because I've been meaning to call you, you know. And it worked out. You know, I'm going to see her Thursday. I'm going to bring her down to Are you guys saying Thursday. that the only way to speak to a homeless person is you, you not have to be a chaplain? No. No. Oh, okay. No, I mean, not at all. It sounds like In other words, she's not, like not a chaplain. We're, 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 I'm not. We're she's not a chaplain. Here. I will. No, I, I, you know, she's yeah. not a chaplain, but what we're saying is... Yes, but is, she's volunteer. You can see her, hear it in her voice. She's already volunteered you know why? for it. Do you know why? Because the reality is... She has a calling. I think that people that work in the community do have a calling. Mm -hmm. Oh yes. I think it's something that goes beyond, there's no money there, let's face it. You know that and you know that. When you're helping the community at whatever level you're helping the community at, there is absolutely no money. You gotta make your money somewhere else, okay? I, I, I'm, I'm one of the very few people, I'm the only person who has an office to do the things that I do. Mm -hmm. 
that's never government funded. We've never gotten money from the government, not a dime. We're self-funded. So well, when you do that kind of work, you, it's very difficult. That's because you charge us every time to see you. Oh, I charge you, but I don't, that's only you. That's only you. I don't charge everybody else. I only charge you. He pays for his time on this show. I just want you to know that. I'm only kidding. Oh. But um, when people do that kind of work, and an interesting part about the chaplaincy is that a lot of people become a chaplain because it's cool. And then once they become a chaplain, they don't do anything. You know what I mean? More well, than half they, of the they people. They write it off on their taxes. Could be. Yeah, I don't know what it is, but it could be. Okay. So my approach is very different. What I'm, what I look for, and you know, and what we're looking for to set up a chaplaincy in Orlando, is for people who are already very involved in serving the community and have a track record of serving the community. So it's inside of them. It's not like let's let's take the chaplain classes, become a chaplain, and then see if the person is going to go out there. That's the way most people do it. You know what I mean? And that's not what, I, what we want. We want people that are very active in the community, that support the community, and that have a track record of serving the community, and then they'll be considered to be a chaplain so you, in, you, our, you in wanna, our organization. You want to get a whole group of, of uh, chaplains to go out there? We want to get at yeah, least, like well, that. we're starting with five. Right. And then we're setting up different programs. We're going to coordinate so that what she does, the other four can support in different ways. Her, her calling is to deal with homeless. Okay. Now, I have media people that are friends of mine like you, although I don't know about the friend part, but you know, okay. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, and I have certain assets that she can t take full advantage of. Mm. And then the other people that come in also, and then we get together, we view our assets, and she has a, an event mm -hmm. coming up. You know, if you have an event coming up, I can send 25,000 emails for that event. That you know? is good to know because this yeah. Saturday I have one. Well, you know, then you should have told me a week ago. But now, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, but those are the kind of things that we can help each other with, mm -hmm. you know, in order to serve the community. And it's the only way to, to achieve for more. Mm -hmm. Because uh, the only way that you just uh, cover more people and help more people, if, if, if only if you work like a team. And is uh, the only way just put on the table, what do you have? And if you don't have it, if I have it, let's let's do it together. Is there an assumption here that most people that are homeless are there because of the times? Or can we make a, a, a statement that there are some people that are just willingly homeless? That you, you know as well as I do that I've interviewed people who, Live. who, who are, are, for lack of a better word, professional homeless people. Mm -hmm. They've been so for a number of years. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't seem, there doesn't seem to be an option that we could offer them to not be homeless. Mm -hmm. there, 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 there seems to be some sort of contentment, although I, I find it strange to use to, or to say the word contentment, you know, to be content you wanna, in the situation. I, I, you want to know something? There's a lot of people that are extremely sensitive people, you know, um, and they can't deal with the pressures of life effectively or they've had tragedies in their life with, that's destroyed them, the death mm -hmm. of a child. I had a friend whose son died, he was six years old, he died of leukemia, and he almost went off the end. You know what I mean? So a lot of people have tragedies that send them in that way, that send them in the direction of drugs, that send them mm -hmm. in, into spins that they cannot pull out of on their own. And they need, and, and when they fall into what you're talking about, okay, they fall into that, and they actually feel serene and comfortable there because mm -hmm. they're not threatened. They don't have to show up for a job and get yelled at or whatever, mm -hmm. you know? So they feel comfortable and they stay in that environment. We, you and I, and when we went down that day, we saw a few people that live there because they want to. Yeah, and I, it, that's very sad because it's like you see a people that just give up. Um, however, it's just like a seventh, it is a big percentage, but a 17% 17, uh, 17 of the entire population of homeless populations, mm -hmm. they are like, something calling chronical homeless. Mm -hmm. And that chronical homeless means that their people generally have mental issues or any type of addiction, alcohol, drugs, or any kind of ad addictions. Mm -hmm. and, and that's like you say, I have a, a, a friend, I call homeless friends. Uh, one of my friends, uh, he lost her fam uh, his family in a car accident everything just lost then in the depression he has just he lost work 
obviously, mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. everything, and he's homeless. But then when he realized that this is not the life that he has to to live and want to, you know, put his life back, it's so difficult for him because he's old, a lot of time out on the streets, mm -hmm. their appearance, the, the, the experience, uh, work and everything, it just... It's pretty much Yeah, you got to start at the bottom at a car wash or something in order to, to pull yourself out. Yep. Let me take a little break. Um, I want to talk about the Hispanic Achievers license plate. Uh, this license plate is in 360 DMV offices throughout the state of Florida, and it celebrates the 500-year anniversary of Hispanics settling in Florida. About 250 years before George Washington was born, Hispanics settled St. Augustine and other settlements along the coast in Florida. This license plate is commemorative, celebrates the 500 year anniversary, it says since 1513, and all the proceeds from this plate go to scholarships, grants, and community service. Last week we wrote a check for $2,000, we sent money to Valencia Community College to administer in scholarship grants from the plate. So every penny that comes in, when you get this plate, you pay a little bit extra, but the money goes in back into the Hispanic community. So it's very important that you pick up this plate um, for your car, okay? Um, we did a little commercial break for me for the Hispanic Achievement License Plate, and we'll go back to, now we'll go back to talking about this issue. Um, I think that we, we can always learn a lot by new exposures, and people always look at the homeless issue like, I don't want to look at that, Mm -hmm. You know, like many issues in the world today, they don't want to look at those issues. And because they're comfortable, unless it affects them directly. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, a family member becomes homeless and it starts to hit home what happens to those people. Mm -hmm. So it is a very, very sensitive uh, situation. And, you know, there aren't a lot of people like you who are willing to go out and dedicate themselves to serving people in trouble, mm -hmm. you know? They do, there's a lot of people that do it, but they do it because they get a state check to do it. They, they're they getting paid a nice salary to go out and do it. Social workers get paid by the state. But you're a person who doesn't get paid by the state to do it, so it's a call, for you it's a calling. It is. It's a mission. It is, and I have a very nice experience today. I have one of my best friends and, and invite her to our food shares that I just go with, um, with different organizations that I, we help. Uh, and it was very interesting because I, I didn't let her know where we're going. <laughs> so I was just like, I need to go over here, there. And, and that was nice because I didn't realize what I'm, I'm doing. Just I'm natural, go, go through, I just go with her through the entire crew, you know, mm -hmm. talking and hugging. Some uh, probably smelling because he, he, he hugged me and read us a call. And then when we come back in the car, she say, oh my God, if someone that knows me know that I was here, no, doesn't believe me, because I was just like I have an, a stereotype on, on what this this community or I, I can you know, mm -hmm. but I did. I, it was not that bad. You do it like you're like fishing. I mean, you mm -hmm. know, like like it was very nice experience because I I can you know show people right. that that is it is nice to help and is she is the most wonderful people given. I mean, she helps a lot of the community, but this experience with the homeless, that, that made me feel like, oh my God, yes, it's great. It's great. How do we reach you? How do we keep in contact with you? I know you have an organization, it's yes. Miami organization. Yes, uh, we uh, have a very nice organization. It's a feed and fortify community organization. Um, my phone number is 407-900. 9761. Okay. And if you are a community service person and you're interested in exploring the opportunity of becoming a chaplain and serving your community, you can call area code 202-905-3600. 202-905-3600. We're going to take a little pause for another person that we're going to be speaking to. Yes. Be, this is just a fade in and fade out. Hi, we're back again, and uh, we're here with a lady called Martha Ortiz, and she is a licensed chiropractic assistant, and we just want to find out, there's some things going on with the laws uh, that have to do with uh, servicing uh, therapy, physical therapy, and the chiropractic industry, and we wanted to learn some of the things that are going on right now, and a lot of people don't even know what a chiropractor does. Uh, how are you, Martha? Very, very, very good. Thank okay. you. Good. Thanks for having me here. Good, good. Jose? Well, let's jump right into it. Um, yeah. Who do you work for? 
Uh, I have a clinic. Uh, it's called Sunshine State Medical, okay. and it's uh, it's north of the airport um, on uh, Samurai. And uh, we have a chiropractor, we have physical therapy, we have massage, um, kinetic exercises, everything that has to do with being able to enhance the body to do what the body is able to do on its own. Right. Now, um, chiropractic has uh, either been called magic, um, a bunch of crazy people, and, or it is truly a miracle because you can manipulate your body to fight a multitude of diseases and they don't have an exact reason why but they know that chiropractor is at least uh, in rows to it. What's your sense of it? It's definitely true in, in, in every sense of the word because um, chiropractic, what, what's done, what it does is you take what the body is capable of already doing on its own and it's like magic because when you cut to yourself you just put a bandage and and all of a sudden you take it off and it's done. It's healed and it's like nothing happened. Well, that's what chiropractor does. A chiropractor can just go in and try to put some movement into your body and um, be able to manage, and that's why it's called manipulation, um, for, th for the body to continue its healing and enhance it to a point where you might not even need medication. So, so and it controls it through your, your uh, neurological wave pass. Right? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, there's a misconception out there that you know chiropractors are they they really don't know much about medicine and all that, and they do. Every medicine they're supposed to know everything about it because every medicine that we take it 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 might fix something, but it might damage something else. That's what it is. But instead, with the chiropractor, you just go directly to the part that you need to work with and, and, and mm -hmm. make it work. Just now, his governor just created, uh, or, or in the, the process of passing a law that will be enacted by next year, that it okay. will greatly curtail this, this movement. Now, what, what Yeah, it's pretty sad uh, because um, it, it's, it's having, it's, you pay for your insurance, let's say a car, uh, car accident, you pay for your insurance, you're supposed to get your benefits. And uh, now they're saying, no, you only get 2500 uh, for chiropractic or anything. And, and if you had, uh, if you get into an accident, you only have 14 days to be able to claim something. And Everybody's also, different. Yeah. Also, they're, they're putting restrictions on how you can operate. Yes. And what are those restrictions? Restrictions, you have to have an MD, a medical, do a medical doctor in the premises. They have to... Uh, uh, Speci uh, specify if a patient has an uh, medi um, emergency medical condition. Depending on that, then the policy becomes effective. Uh, but you, you, have to, it has, you have to be, it has to be recommended by a doctor? By a medical doctor. Okay, and that wasn't that way before? No. Okay, so that's something new that's come into law recently. Yes, and it limits yeah. everybody, and everybody needs well, to know, you know that. The medical lobby is very strong in the state legislature. Yes. You know, it's super strong. strong. I mean, you know, you know I've, I've done work with the state legislature, and it, you, it, lobbyists control the state legislature, there's no question. Yes. So the medical profession is looking at this, I, I would assume they're looking at this industry growing, this particular segment That's growing, exactly right. and they want to control it so and they, that they, they get they, a piece of the action somehow. And they're saying it's, they're just trying to fight fraud, and mm -hmm. that's not where the fraud is. You know, that's not how it goes. It's just, it's just well, I, taking I can, the benefits away but, from, the, from the people. But in Marta, the I, can, I can see that there could be people that execute fraud in this situation oh, if there's no restriction. Definitely. I mean, in every business, there's unscrupulous people. Always. You know, whether it be religion, doctors, lawyers, whatever it is, there's, that always creeps in to, to always. you know, so I, I it's good that they put a safeguard, but it's not good that they put limitations. Not for the people. They, they yeah. need it. Yeah. That's why they, they're paying for the, their policy. They should be able to get their limits mm -hmm. and the, the benefits, know, not the limits. Is that the way benefits. in other states? Is it that way in other states too? It catch up to Florida because yeah, in New York is kind of like that up mm -hmm. north. Basically, yeah. up north is because yeah. I, I come from New York too. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, that's it. Basically, catch up. So have you seen your business go down as a result of this, or is it holding, or are you changing your pattern no, of now, approach? No, Yeah, in this case. Um, I'm trying to change it now so that we can accommodate exactly to what we're supposed to do. Um, but this is going to be sad because there's going to be a lot of, a lot of uh, businesses, uh, clinics that will have to close because of this. And chiropractors that will have to go to another state, to other well, states, get another license someplace else so that they can find it. But obviously, obviously, don't you think that 
you know, the way politics is, that they knew that they were going to close down clinics by passing this law. Well, yeah, well, they, they also know that um, most uh, medical plans are not paying for it. So most of the people who go to the, these clinics pay out of pocket, which could be quite substantial. Yes. And then and, and it, one of the things that, like, Sunshine State Medical does, we try to, we, we try to go to um, places and, like, every first Thursday of a month, try to give them information. People mm -hmm. need to know what's going on. Mm -hmm. And they need to know what the policy is all about. What, what is it that it really covers them? And they need to know. They don't explain mm -hmm. everything to them. But Sunshine State Medical has that mission. It's not just to treat the patient. It's to give them information as well to, so that they know exactly what, what they have in their hands. What, what's the policy? What is it that you have here? It's not just pay for it and hopefully you get something. Well, the truth is a lot of medical doctors um, do believe in chiropractic. They just can't stand behind it yes. because it's not recognized yes. as, as deeply as it is. And you have some personal background, and I know, uh, real quick, if you could tell us uh, a little bit how you came to this. With the chiropractic, um, it, it was uh, was getting migraine headaches, and then all of a sudden, I used to go to the, the hospital in New York, and injections, and stay home all, uh, in the dark. And then finally, I went to a chiropractor. He started giving me an adjustment. The second adjustment was it. Ever since then, I don't. If I get a headache, a slight headache, mm -hmm. I go to a chiropractor, or in my case, I get an adjustment, and I'm done. I have to take any pills. I don't have to take anything. How do we keep up with you? How do how do uh, you? Yeah, uh, you know, I know you said it from the beginning, but tell us again. Uh, how do we contact you? How do people reach you? Uh, yes, uh, um, the clinic. Uh, phone number is four zero seven four eight two zero zero five two. And we are two miles north of the airport, the uh, Orlando International Airport. And um, we have a website, www.ssmio.com. Okay. So Do you have medical. information on the website as to people's, um, uh, like, the most frequent questions that people are asking, that kind of thing? Yeah, we're sending them every month a, a newsletter okay. as well. And, um, and again, when we try to do the information uh, on a, the first Thursday of every month, mm -hmm. we go to a restaurant and they give it to us for free so that we can bring people in everything that has to do with medical mm -hmm. and then give them information. And so we'll, we'll, you'll be able to get the information there. Well, Marta, thank you so much. Jose, thanks a lot. Um, in closing, don't forget to get the Hispanic Achievers license plate. Thank it's you. in every DMV. Remember, all the money from this license plate, from the sale of this license plate, goes to nonprofit community Hispanic organizations throughout the state of Florida. And just recently, we wrote a check for $2,000 for uh, book grants to students at Valencia Community College from the revenues of this plate. This is Danny Ramos on Hispanic Speak Out and Jose Miranda. Uh, we will see you next week. Same time, same place. Thank you, Bright House Cable.